So we have a 61-year-old female who was diagnosed with symptomatic multiple myeloma, and as a result, she was started on initial induction chemotherapy. Um, her staging was stage two, uh, and she got lenalidomide bortezomib and dex, so-called RVD triplet therapy, followed by transplant consolidation and lenalidomide maintenance. Um, of note, she did have translocation 1416 at diagnosis, and therefore the decision was to actually proceed with the maintenance therapy. And her remission lasted quite a long time for approximately five years. So this 61-year-old uh, female is relatively typical for multiple myeloma. The median age of diagnosis is approximately mid-60s. Uh, however, it's a very heterogeneous disease. We see our youngest patient was 18 and our oldest is over 100. And that uh, heterogeneity also adds to the complexity of treating this cancer because patients will come with various levels of comorbidities, particularly the older patients. We now know that there's increasing cardiac comorbidities that can affect their tolerance of different therapy and eligibility for transplant. Uh, so it's important to think about the patient's myeloma in the context of their age and other medical conditions. Multiple myeloma, as we know, unlike solid tumors, can't be staged with localized or diffuse because it's a bone marrow disease. Uh, so the initial staging was Dury salmon in, in the 70s, and while that was an important advancement, one of the criticisms of that is the lytic lesions that are detected by radiologists on skeletal imaging. And the problem with that is what one radiologist says is four lesions, another may read as six, and therefore you have some upstaging. And it didn't really seem to be uh, reproducible as much, and we didn't get as good separation. So along in two came in 2005 the international staging system, which was an effort to try to have a more simple staging system. Um, and this is based on just beta-2 microglobulin and albumin, and it's globally reproduced, and it's very simple. And it allowed separation into stages one, two, and three with associated median survivals of five, four, and three years, respectively. So while this was a big advancement, we now know that in all of oncology, molecular information is very important, and it helps risk stratify patients even further. So the latest version of the myeloma staging has come out in the JCO in 2015 by Dr. Palumbo et al. And this one includes the international staging system based on beta-2 and albumin, but now also incorporates LDH and molecular risk. And in particular, high LDH is considered high risk, and certain uh, findings by FISH typically, including 414 translocation, 1416, and also uh, deletion 17P are all considered high risk. So now we integrate all of that and the reason this is an advancement is now we can segregate patients into median overall survival for stage one of not even reached, stage two of approximately seven years, and stage three of only three and a half years. So clearly this illustrates that it's this high-risk population that still has an unmet medical need in spite of all of our new drug approvals in myeloma.